A revolution is coming in how we design and build our buildings. The developers, designers, builders, and advocates who are driving this revolution recognize that the old way of building, the status quo, is bad for our health inside and for our climate future outside. They also know that there's a vastly better way to build that's both cost-effective and scalable. We're just steps away from the site of the Boston Tea Party, where Sam Adams and a ragtag group of revolutionaries famously rebelled against the status quo, helped set the American Revolution into motion, and ultimately reshaped the modern world. Overlooking it all is this building, seemingly just one more glittering glass skyscraper going up in Boston, this city of tech titans. But this building is different. You might even call it the Sam Adams of skyscrapers, although its real name is the Winthrop Center. Developed by MP Boston, designed by Handel Architects, engineered by Stephen Winter Associates, and built by Suffolk Construction, this $1.35 billion project stands 691 feet tall and boasts 1.8 million gross square feet. It's hard to miss in Boston's skyline, situated as it is in the heart of the financial district on some of the most valuable land you'll find anywhere. The top 510,000 square feet of the building will house 317 units of prime residential space, all to be LEED Gold certified. This real estate will capture sweeping views of the Boston Harbor, the Charles River, and the city below. All of that is great, but it's not really what makes the building unique. What's remarkable about this building is the revolutionary energy performance and indoor air quality of its 810,000 square feet of commercial office space. For comparison, existing Class A office space in Boston uses a whopping 150% more energy than the office space at Winthrop Center will. Even LEED Platinum certified office buildings are energy hogs compared to this building, using 60% more energy than Winthrop Center's office space. Meanwhile, this building will provide up to 50% more fresh air to building occupants than comparable buildings. How? The fresh air gains will come from a combination of passive house design and well standard certification. The energy performance gains and the greenhouse gas emissions reductions that come with it are 100% passive house. All of this office space will be passive house certified by the Passive House Institute, making Winthrop Center the largest passive house office building in the world once it's completed in early 2023. Wait, a skyscraper is a passive house, you ask? Doesn't sound like a house. What even is a passive house? Well, first, the passive house approach to design and construction applies to all building types and can fit any architectural style. So don't be fooled by the house in the name. In the original German, passive house, the house, or H-A-U-S, connotes building more generally. A passive house can be an apartment block, a school, a museum, a firehouse, a retail store, a hospital, an industrial facility, a high-rise office tower, pretty much any building type you can imagine. The passive in the name refers to the fact that these buildings can be heated and cooled passively thanks to their high-performance building shells that keep the heat in during the winter and the cool in during the summer. Most important, passive house buildings create healthy, comfortable, and quiet interior environments full of clean, filtered, fresh air. The five classic passive house design principles are, one, continuous insulation, wrapping buildings in a thermal barrier that keeps them warm in the winter and cool in the summer. Two, no thermal bridges, so careful detailing to avoid any building elements that allow heat or cool to bypass that thermal barrier. Three, airtight construction, creating an airtight layer that acts like a windbreaker, stopping air from penetrating to the inside. Four, high performance windows and doors that are airtight, thermally broken, insulating, and that manage solar gain. And five, fresh air ventilation with heat recovery, creating havens of clean air and energy efficiency. At Winthrop Center, the first four principles are achieved through a triple pane, thermally broken curtain wall system by soda wall, insulated with rock wool mineral wool insulation. The fifth principle is achieved with four massive energy recovery ventilation units manufactured by TMI. As part of the recent national conference of the Passive House Network, 
MP Boston opened up the Winthrop Center to a construction site tour. Here's Brad Mahoney of MP Boston. So we're gonna make three stops on this tour. We're gonna to take a stop up top, top half of the building, 317 residential units will go up to floor 46. Take a look at progress of construction there. We'll stop down at the main mechanical floor, which is kind of the heart of the project. It serves the entire project boilers, chillers, energy recovery units. The third stop, we're gonna go down to 21, which is one of the passive house floors. So why, with a project of this magnitude, with a construction budget of well over a billion dollars, did the developer choose passive house design for the office space? There are many different reasons, right? Um, not the least of which is everyone wants to go to work in a place that directly addresses the thing that we're all seeing around us, right? Climate. Are you directly contributing by going to work in a space that is the most energy efficient solution for an office building? Are you directly contributing in a positive manner to climate by showing others that I really believe in this, right? It's part of my core values, part of our company's core values. An existing Class A building on average uses, you know, 150% more energy than this building will. And that's significant. In addition to wanting to work in a space that has tremendous fresh air, higher levels of fresh air than existing buildings. The acoustical, thermal benefits, comfort benefits are embedded within Passive House. So when we decided to take Passive House and say, we're going to stretch it a little bit and apply the other healthy building standard, uh, well certification, it wasn't a big reach. We started this project with the goal of kind of creating a talent magnet. And so as we sit here in 2022, hearing about, you know, tenants that are, or employees that are leaving, right? Are they coming back to the same industry, shifting industries? You know, we think this building will directly address that because of everything from climate, healthy buildings, you know, even the simple layout of the floor allows it for, you know, robust natural light. It allows for neighborhoods to be created, which as office gets reimagined coming out of the pandemic, allows tenants to directly address you know, those concerns that will bring people back, right? That'll bring that social fabric of working back to the office. I, what I would say our biggest lesson learned through Passive House, starting from the outside in, starting with the facade, right? Because that's really um, the simplicity of Passive House. In addition to, you know, lack of thermal bridges, having good thermal breaks, it's really kind of keeping what's in in and not letting it out. And so it's, it's really the facade. There's a third layer of glass, triple glazing. Um, but, you know, the amount of insulation that's embedded within the facade behind these mullions, this insulation at the head and sill, um, to really achieve passive house levels of insulation, R18, um, at the opaque, at the spandrel levels. If we have a building that's 691 feet tall, halfway up the building, above the office but below the residential, we have a full floor that's all mechanical. It has all of the chilled water, all the hot water, has all of the fresh air, and it's delivering it both up and down. The simplified approach of one set of systems that's serving both residential and uh, the office, it allows for some synergies. So like the traditional office that goes home at six o'clock, residential is just coming home. So the plant is running, right? Serving the residential, right? While the office is using less of a load. When this started, it was this belief that we're contributing positively, right? To the built environment, showing that there's a new breed of building that's coming and we're gonna help lead the way. On a personal level and professional level to feel like you're positively contributing to that, you're helping kind of redefine how buildings can be energy efficient. 
and also be beautiful. It's, um, it's a win-win. And we think about the, the, peop the user that's gonna be in this building, right? How are they gonna feel? And if they know the story, they're gonna feel good. To learn more about Passive House, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, visit PassiveHouseAccelerator.com, and join in at our Passive House Accelerator live Zoom calls on Wednesdays. Thanks for watching.